back. It's week two of our series. More to the story. And let me ask you a quick question. Are there any people in your life who are friends now, but maybe you didn't like them when you first met them? Yes. Yeah. I think that's actually pretty common. Um, don't point them out if they're in the room, by the way. You're like, what? I didn't know you didn't like me. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty common. In fact, some of your friends maybe didn't like you when they first met you. Um, it's not that they disliked you, but maybe they just didn't understand you. And as you spent more time together, they got to know who you were. And then their opinion about you changed. It's just that they didn't think about, like, they didn't know when they first met you who you really were. There's more to the story when it comes to people. Uh, fun side story, uh, freshman year of college at Bible College, uh, me and another guy on my floor got into a fight. It started because we were just kind of joking around with permanent markers and slashing at each other. Uh, but then it got a little bit more personal as they started to stab. Uh, and eventually we're tumbling on the floor in the hallway, like permanent marker everywhere as we're trying to like hit each other and fight. And I don't know why we just set each other off that night and some of the upperclassmen had to like literally pull us apart. And I didn't go to church the next morning because I had permanent marker on me. Um, and then as he and I got to know each other more, uh, we actually became really good friends and sophomore year he was my roommate. So see, like you may not like someone, you may even like fight them, but then we what? Right, but like, <laughs> yeah, hey, you want to have a marker fight? We can be friends after this. Um, so look, that's what we're talking about in this series. Because the reality is, is like there are topics that we think we know about. We have impressions, we have opinions about them, but the way sometimes we see things is slightly off. It's twisted. It's distorted. There's more to the story that we need to understand. Right? Same is true about church. When you come to church, there are certain topics you expect to hear, right? What, what is it you expect to hear when you come to church? What? Jesus, yeah. What has four squirrels collecting us and lives in trees? Oh, I know it's a squirrel, but we're in church, so the answer's got to be Jesus, right? Um, what else do you expect to hear in church? Bible stories. Bible stories, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Praying, yeah. Um, maybe like love or something, right? Like, God is love. They're talking about the Bible. So there's some things we expect to hear at church. But then, then there are topics we don't expect to hear in church. Things like, like I'm probably not going to do a series on NFL football. It's just not going to happen. Um, I could, but I don't want to. You can do one, like, We could do Christ figures in Star Wars. Yeah. Messianic figures and Star Wars. Uh, you know, we're probably not going to do a night where we talk about streaming on Twitch. Um, although, like, that's pretty cool. Um, we're probably not going to do a talk on how to get more followers on TikTok, because, like, y'all are pretty good at that already. Um, so tonight, actually, we're going to pick one of those topics, and we're going to talk about Twitch streaming and how to up your game, uh, get more viewers. Actually, no, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. Some of you were like, okay, I like where this is going. No. Um, but we are going to talk about a topic you don't expect to talk about in church. Are you ready for it? Because last week I shocked you guys and you all like, <gasps> shook. Tonight we're talking about porn. Hey, that got a better response than last week. Good job, guys. We're, we're, we're getting more comfortable with this. Now, like I said last week, uh, we don't, we're, not, we're doing this series about sexual integrity, not because we want to point out and shame people, but we want to look at just what scripture has for us. Um, maybe you're surprised that I just said porn in church. In fact, if you want to, you can count how many times I say it tonight. Um, don't do that. Just focus on what we're talking about. Um, <laughs> Men too, right? Um, maybe you just rolled your eyes because you're like, why do we have to talk about this in church? Or maybe you rolled your eyes because you're like, well, I just don't think it's a big deal. Maybe you're disgusted, and so you're like, i got to keep my church act up. I don't want people to know that like, I'm kind of interested in the topic and what we got to talk about. I just want people to know that I'm like disgusted and offended that, that Rich even said porn. Right? Three. <laughs> so whether or not you think it's a problem, I think there's a few things you, want, you need to know. So we're going to talk some facts tonight, uh, because I think a lot of us, uh, we don't hear these facts enough. Uh, we're going to talk about what the Bible has to say. And, and we're going to dig into this more in small groups. So here's a, here's a couple of here's a couple need-to-knows. Things you need to know. First, depending on what kind of music you listen to, you're, you will hear references to things that are somewhat pornographic on a pretty consistent basis. You're like, what? Um, doesn't seem like a big deal when Cardi B raps about it, but when I say porn in church, everyone's like, we can't talk about that here. 
Um, if you watch TV, movies, Netflix, Hulu, they don't shy away from it. You've probably or possibly seen things that could be labeled as porn. Here, here's the thing, we'll get into this in a little bit. Porn doesn't have to be just a mature or X-rated website on your phone. Um, but it doesn't mean that the things that we're seeing online, on TV, uh, on Netflix, all that stuff, has undertones of porn pornographic uh, imagery. I'm not saying that to make us feel guilty. I'm just trying to make a point that this topic isn't as far away as a lot of us tend to think. Third thing that we need to know, just to kind of wrap our heads around, the average age of exposure to porn is 11 years old. <clears throat> I was 10 when someone I trusted showed me porn. So like, this just rings a little bit differently to me um, because I've lived it. So we're talking about stuff that already affects a lot of us. Like this isn't just like an adult thing or a teen thing. Like this is preteen. My wife and I, we're already talking to like our sons about this kind of stuff because like anyone who has an internet uh, accessible device can potentially bump into this. It's, it's super easy to uh, run into. Um, and so like we just want to be honest and say like, there's a real risk of being exposed to this, even if you're not intentionally looking for it. I wasn't, and someone showed it to me. I didn't want to see it. I was ashamed, I was disgusted, I wanted to run away, and when I was like, no, I don't want to see that, I got laughed at. Like, that's an awkward place to be, and maybe you've been in a similar situation. Um, so if you're new to church and you're like, dang, I picked the weird night to check out youth group. Um, look, I'm sorry about that. Um, not trying to weird anyone out, but yeah, this is the series we're in, and this is kind of what we're talking about. Uh, so I get it. Don't worry. Uh, we'll get back to topics like love and praying and reading the Bible soon. But for tonight, we're talking about this topic. Um, I know it's not easy, but here's something that I would love for all of us to just get and understand today. I believe that we're not just affected by porn. We are influenced by the culture of porn. Here's what I mean. Porn isn't something that could potentially tempt some of us. It's not something that just affects a small minority of us. This is something that influences all of us because the porn culture is all around us. Now pause. When I say culture, and I say culture in a lot of my messages, so I just want to kind of like wrap, wrap our brains around, like what do I mean when I say culture? Uh, does anyone want to take a stab at it? When I say like our culture or the world we live in, like what am I getting at? Normal, yeah? Okay, the normal. So when I talk about culture, I'm talking about all the things that kind of influence our worldview, right? So uh, our movies do that, uh, books we read do that, our media and social media choices do that, our politics, uh, where we get our info from, um, music reflects culture, art reflects culture, all of these things uh, help to, we'll say define culture, but also like, they're the things that kind of give us our cultural messages. So uh, we, we can even go so far as to say what's normal, uh, in our culture, like kind of just what we experience, but it also goes even so far as to say what our culture, what our world, what our communities value, right? Um, so when we talk about porn culture, we're talking about the influence of porn in those cultural places, in those messages. So Snapchat, sexting, movies, music, advertisements, conversations, apps, you name it, it's everywhere. Plus, the porn industry uh, is a business. It generates $12 billion a year. That's more than uh, the annual combined revenues of ABC, NBC, and CBS. That's massive. It's around us all the time. It influences everything from print media to movies, TV, social media, and even darker stuff, like the abortion industry and human trafficking. It's impossible to spend time around something and not be influenced by it. So tonight, we want to look and kind of see like what's the biblical wisdom where we can learn to identify these things uh, and learn like what should we be thinking about these things and how do we reject these things? When it comes down to it, porn is a sexualized, is sexualized content designed to get a specific response. If I had to give porn a definition, this is it. Like I said, it's not just a mature website or an X-rated image or video. It's any kind of sexualized content designed to get a response, even if there's no nudity. Content that's designed to get a sexualized response has porn influences in it. A lot of people start watching porn because they're curious. So it becomes kind of like a sex education. The problem is, is that porn was actually never designed to educate us. But it was designed for something. 
It was designed to hook us and make us addicted. It was designed to manipulate us. We're being influenced by something that's actually teaching us a very fake, very unreal education. And that's interesting. Um, what's, what I think is more interesting is you and I have a pretty good tendency to see through phony things, right? Like, most of you probably have like this kind of innate nature to like see through phonies and, and call people out. Um, so it's kind of like this. Okay. See, here's where it comes, right? Um, so Tyler brought me some food. And I didn't know he was going to bring us food, but I think this is kind of perfect for tonight. And no, I'm not going to eat in front of you. Ooh, but you can eat our fries. I ate half of it. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. <laughs> um, you're on my way to becoming my favorite student. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. So uh, how many of you love Wendy's? Maybe it's not Wendy's. Maybe it's Burger King or McDonald's, whatever. How many of you love to go grab some fast food? Yeah. I love Wendy's, my boys love Wendy's. We get Wendy's every week after church. They get in the car, they start chanting, Wendy's, Wendy's, Wendy's. Shut <laughs> um, So look, hey, we get, uh, ooh, this is a big burger. It's hefty, is this bacon in it? Yeah. All oh, nice. So let's say, let's say, um, we have the manager from Wendy's, and he's gonna come, and he's gonna give us a talk on eating healthy. You're like, what? And he's gonna talk about the things on their menu. He's like, you can have a Baconator. You can have some bacon and cheese fries. You can have a Frosty or a Frosty Chino. And he's telling us about how we can eat healthy on these. And you would, you would look at him and be like, no, that, that's not how that works, right? Uh, why, why would we allow someone like that to come in and give us nutritional advice, right? Uh, I'm gonna love this later, by the way. Um, why would we do that? See, here's the deal. Going to porn for sex education is like going to McDonald's to learn how to eat healthy. Right? It's not designed for that. It would have the wrong effects. It would be backwards. It can actually hurt us. The truth is that there's more to the story. And so that's what we're going to talk about for the next few minutes. So we're going to start. We're going to use the book of Proverbs as our launching point. Uh, tonight, Proverbs 14, verse 15. Uh, Proverbs is a book in the Old Testament. Uh, it's a book uh, written in kind of poetry language, but it deals a lot with wisdom. It was written by King Solomon, considered by many arguably to be the wisest person ever lived. Um, so what would an ancient king who lived 25, 26, 2700 or so years ago, that's a long time. Uh, what would an ancient king have to say that is relevant for you and I today? Uh, I think actually a lot, and a lot of it makes sense, not just for teenagers, but for adults and everyone else. Proverbs 14, verse 15 tells us, The simple believe anything, but the prudent give thought to their steps. What is this verse saying? Simple. Let's start there. The simple. Simple people are naive. Simple people believe everything they hear and everything they read online. Uh, they believe what they see on TikTok. They fall for any prank because they're gullible. Simple means naive. They believe anything. And when it comes to porn, some of us could be considered simple. If you've heard messages like this, um, it's not hurting anyone. There are worse things I could be doing. I'm not doing anything. I just looked. At least I'm not having sex with a real person. We've been naive when it comes to porn. We believe the cultural messages. But I want you guys to hear this. Hear this and know it, because we're going to unpack it the rest of the night. Porn never tells the whole story. Porn never tells the whole story. There's a website. It's called fightthenewdrug.org. The entire point of the website is uh, resources to fight porn. Notice the name of the website is Fight the New Drug. We said porn is addictive. It's like a drug. It's designed to be that way. They've compiled decades of studies from respected institutions on the topic of pornography. Their website has uh, has assembled over a thousand pornographic uh, or pornography related articles. I want to share with you guys just some of the research they've discovered because I think like if we're gonna move from being uh, simple and naive people to people who are wise and well informed, we need to know what we're up against, don't we? So here's uh, about twelve or thirteen facts for you. First one: studies have found that porn use is correlated with less sexual and relational 
satisfaction. Um, and we'll, we'll kind of get to the end of these and summarize these. Um, less, less relational and sexual satisfaction. Uh, secondly, studies have found that porn use is correlated with intimacy problems. It leads to problems between husbands and wives later. Third thing, frequent exposure to pornography is associated with less interest in having a sexually exclusive relationship with a partner. Why? Because you go from one image or one video to the next. One person doesn't satisfy you anymore. Next, uh, frequent exposure to pornography is associated with the belief that marriage is sexually confining and that having children and family is, a not, is not a good idea. Um, frequent exposure to pornography is associated with believing it's possible to have high se sexual satisfaction without having affection for one's partner. You can just divorce the idea of sex and love and it doesn't matter. Frequent exposure to pornography is associated with less trust in intimate partners. It actually erodes trust. And you guys know how it is when you feel like you can't trust anyone anymore. Like that destroys relationships. The sex acts shown in, porn in pornography are unrealistic and often abusive. They're manipulated. They're coercive. It's not how we behave. Um, researchers have found that even moderate porn use was correlated with having a lower response to sexual cues in the brain. In short, it's harder to get turned on. Studies have found that porn use is correlated with lowered quality of life and poor health. Anxiety, depression, guilt, shame, all just pile up. Um, even moderate porn use is correlated with damage to parts of the brain involved in motivation and decision making. Um, there's actually a really good book about this whole kind of thing. It's called Hooked, and it's one of the first books I came across. It's not even written by Christians, so like this isn't like people trying to like just prove that the Bible's right. This is uh, some doctors who got together and asked the question, how is casual sex affecting people? Um, and so it, it affects brain development. Uh, the whole study that we've been talking about, in the, uh, the science has been talking about in the past few years of like how our brains are elastic and neurons and things um, over repeated action like uh, grow and, and, and things like that. So really interesting stuff. That book is a good resource um, if you're kind of curious on like what's the data showing us. Um, and not only that, but it's got stories from real people in there who are just like, I thought I was believing this. I was simple, I was naive. And uh, later on, like I realized, like that was that was just not what it was about. So, um, yeah, definitely some like brain chemistry stuff going on there. Um, no, nah, I won't say that. I was gonna say like like if you want to see your point across to a friend, you'd be like, porn causes brain damage, right? Like it sounds funny, but like that's what we're talking about. So like I don't want to be insensitive about that, but like if you want to make a point to a friend, you get their attention. Compulsive pornography users are at risk for depression and stress. When adolescents, both male and female, this is interesting because for a long time people just considered porn a guy problem, and it's not. It's a guy and a girl problem. Um, when adolescents, both male and female, are exposed to sexualized media, they're more likely to have stronger notions of women being sex objects. Things to be used and discarded when you're done with them. Last kind of fact I'll highlight is pornography makes violence appear sexy. So porn doesn't tell us all the facts when we look at it. It just, it doesn't. It manipulates us, it warps us, it changes what we think about sex and sexuality. It changes our view on people, uh, that no longer are they people created in God's image, uh, but there are things to be used and discarded when we're done with them. It wants us to be distracted. It wants us to be addicted. It does not want us to have a full and complete life the way that God has designed us. So if we had to summarize all those facts, I'd summarize them in three things. First, porn will not make you better at sex. It actually makes you worse at it because it damages your relationships. Second, porn will not make sex better for you. It will actually make it less desirable because it doesn't give you realistic expectations of sex. And third thing, porn will not help you understand what sex is like. It will actually confuse you and lead you farther away from actually understanding it. Let's bring this in. God doesn't hate porn because he thinks sex is bad. He's anti-porn because pornography is twisted uh, and has twisted what he's intended sex to be. 
He's anti-porn because it devalues the people that he made and loves and cares about. Like, porn isn't just about what you do with it, but there's an entire industry of people making this. People made in God's image that God loves, and it devalues them too. God is anti-porn because it's bad for you and it's bad for others. We say this all the time. God is a 100% loving God, and there's absolutely nothing loving about pornography. It gives the appearance of love because we confuse love and sex and intimacy, but it's not loving. So back to King Solomon. The second part of the verse tells us that the prudent give thought to their steps. This means that a person evaluates information carefully so that they don't fall into a trap. And that's exactly what porn is, a trap. We don't use the word prudent a lot, but a prudent person is, is uh, wise. A prudent person is smart. A prudent person is someone who listens to the information and wants to make smart choices about what they're learning. But porn is a trap. It's designed to be a trap, and it's a really good trap. I say it's really good at trapping us. It wants to take things from us. Your time, your attention, your money. It creates addiction. In exchange, it gives you a false sense of sexual closeness. Culture doesn't tell you that because culture doesn't see it themselves. They don't know. So the prudent person is someone who's wise. And... Um, this isn't just something that Solomon wrote, but even the Apostle Paul picks up on this in the, in the New Testament, uh, in Ephesians uh, 5, 15. And um, can we get, actually, you know what, we have an extra note page. I would love an extra note page. We got extras? Because, um, I don't know, I was just thinking about this, and like, I had one verse in here that I want to highlight, but I would love for actually for us to read this together. Because here's what I know. Here's what I know. We can read the good verse, and we can learn from it. But what I know is, like, good news is better when you know the bad news, right? When you know, when we, when we as Christians believe that Jesus has saved us and given us new life, we have to recognize what did Jesus save us from, right? And we, when we realize what Jesus has saved us from, the good news is so much better. So I don't highlight the bad news to actually make us feel sh ashamed or guilty. I highlight the bad news because I want us to know what we've been saved from and what we've been called to. So could we actually read this aloud together, this Ephesians Five passage. Could we do that? Would you guys do that with me? All right. For you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. That is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. All right. So look, Paul tells us, Paul tells us, he says you were once in darkness, but now you are people of light because you're in Christ. And like we've been talking about for the past few weeks, even from our last series, uh, our final message in that series, we talked about guilt and shame and all those things. And Paul is saying, just like we talked about then, when you, like, Porn is something we often do in secret. Like, we look at it in secret, we respond to it in secret. Um, when it's brought to the light, it begins to lose its power. And that's what Paul is saying. Like, have nothing to do with that old way of living. Like, put that aside. You're now in Christ. You were made to be light. You were made for good things. He says, don't be foolish, but figure out what God's will is. And so I love uh, Ephesians 5.15 because I totally think it picks up on what Solomon was getting at in Proverbs. Paul says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. When Paul says, be very careful, it's just like Solomon saying, give thought to your steps. Don't believe everything you hear. Porn never tells the whole story. 
When you're being manipulated, step the other way. Be prudent. Be wise. Get yourself away from the things that are destructive. So how do we apply this? Um, my hope is that we can brainstorm some ways to apply this and set up some safeguards and some ways to respond to this in our small groups. But even tonight, we'll, we'll talk through a couple things. Um, just like we said, it was crazy for us to someone for someone to talk about eating healthy. You know, if they're like at a fast food restaurant, um, we would see right through that. And we need to have the same kind of mentality when it comes to porn culture. There's a lot of steps we can take. For the sake of today, I want to focus on two things that we can do. First, refuse to be fooled. Refuse to be fooled. Train your brain. When you see that ad, when you see that image on Insta, when you see that Snapchat, argue with it. Question it. What is this trying to sell me or convince me to do? A lot of us, we end up looking at porn and wondering, like, Man, how did I get here? It's not like you woke up one day and just decided, like, let's go for it. Small things along the way led us to this place. Seeing an image, getting curious, looking for more. That's how we get there. What is this thing trying to sell me or convince me to do? What is it training me to think about? What is it training me to believe? I like to think of you guys as adults. I know some people look at you like, ah, oh, you're just kids, you're just teenagers, but for all intents and purposes, you guys, you guys live in the real world. You're smart. You see through so many things that are fake and manipulative. I want you to access that same brain power when it comes to porn culture. Remember, it's everywhere. And it wants something from you. It doesn't care about you. It doesn't care about what's best for you. It doesn't care about your future relationships. It doesn't care about your current relationships. It wants to track you. So be wise, be smart, be careful, refuse to be fooled. Second thing you can do, <coughs> refuse to participate. Create a plan to set yourself up for success, to be able to resist before you even reach the trap. What do I mean? Um, oftentimes we don't come up with a way of escape. We don't come up with the safeguards or the boundaries we need, and then it's too late. We find ourselves engaging in the act, and then we feel guilty about it. We need to create plans of what to do before we find ourselves in those situations. So think ahead. What will you do when you come across pornographic content or are tempted to believe the lies of porn culture? And like I said, it's not just explicit images or videos. It's any kind of sexualized content designed to get a response. So what will you do? What's your plan? Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters! Right? Who, what, what are you going to do about it? Have, have a friend in your corner. Someone you can text right away just to say, like, dude, I'm struggling. Hey, I'm tempted right now. And if that person already knows like, what you're going through because you've talked to them, they're going to know exactly, like, okay, yo, I got you. What do you need? Right, like just saying it, like begins to rip away its power. We don't have to be afraid of this. We don't have to be ashamed of it. Let's get people who can back us up and encourage us. So how will you stop the manipulation? Sometimes it's not enough to know you're being tricked. We just covered a lot of stats and facts tonight. You know that you're being tricked. We know that we're trying to be tracked. But knowing something and doing something about it are two totally different things. You need help. I need help to get unmanipulated. You need a concrete action plan. You need to put some restrictions around your access to technology. If an industry makes $12 billion a year, you can believe they're very good at what they do. They are persuasive. They are convincing. They are addictive. That's their business model. It's a trap. And it's not possible to get out of every trap by yourself. Talk to a trusted adult, a parent, a small group leader, someone who can be in your corner and have your back. Let them know what's going on. Talk to them about what you struggle with. Maybe you've got some things you need to confess. That weight that needs to be lifted off your shoulders might mean that maybe you need to ask them for some accountability, some help. Don't be ashamed of that. Like, I need it, you need it. We need it together. Someone who will check in with you from time to time. We need each other to help fight this addiction. 
None of us want to be part of things that manipulate us. We don't want to be controlled by these things. We don't want to associate with something that's going to hurt us and hurt others. We're smart. We're smarter than that. We don't want to be controlled. But porn culture is sneaky. It's good at getting us hooked. But we've named it. We've brought it to the light. We can begin to open our eyes. We can begin to see it for what it is, and we can begin to move away from it. How liberating would it be to run away from these things that trap us? How good would it be for us to move away from these things that destroy lives? We would feel hurt less. We would hurt others less. Like This is a big deal Um, because it doesn't just affect us and what we do in secret. Remember, porn never tells the whole story. We have a God who loves us immensely. He made us, he created us, he knows what's best for us, and he wants good things for us. I hope you believe that. That God who loves you and knows you wants good things for you. He wants to see us thrive, not suffer. Porn, it's hurtful, it's damaging. God wants better for us. He's given us incredible minds to see through the lies, to see through the fog, And he's given us the will to say no, to walk away. So choose Christ. Choose wisdom. Be proactive. Don't just wait for something to happen. Have a plan. Be willing to have hard conversations. We need more of them because it's awkward until we actually start talking about it. Got it. Um, Guys, this this is worth the fight. Don't get tricked. Don't let it destroy you. Don't let it destroy your relationships. This is worth the fight. If you're gonna fight something like this, fight it hard. Um, so, hey, uh, we're gonna head to small groups in a second. Through this uh, series, I wanna highlight like resources that I always think will be helpful for you guys. Again, I mentioned the Bible reading plan, uh, that's good. Um, a book I would love to recommend is called Chasing Love by Sean McDowell. Uh, his dad was Josh McDowell, famous author, uh, did a lot of Christian apologetics and things like that, and Sean is brilliant. Uh, he's a speaker, author, writer, uh, does a lot of stuff engaging just with culture and science and all that kind of stuff. We've shown some of his videos here before. He's got a great YouTube channel. But his newest book is called Chasing Love, Sex, Love, and Relationships in a Confused Culture. Uh, this book was written with teenagers in mind. Um, it's not incredibly uh, long. It's about 150 pages. But he covers uh, a huge range of topics uh, from... Um, like dating, relationships, sex, porn, uh, even some of the stuff in the homosexual and transgender uh, movement. And what I really appreciate about Sean is that uh, when there are times where, you know, like sometimes it's hard to just decide what to do. And one of the things he does in his writing is he says, let's consider both sides. Let's just hear, let's hear, let's, let's hear a well-rounded argument. Let's, let's inform ourselves of what both sides believe. And when it's appropriate, he challenges us to decide. Where, where, where do we land on this? Um, so that's a great book. I would highly, highly recommend it. It's new, it just came out a few months ago. You can get it on Amazon for like 15 or 16 bucks. It's a really good book. Um, so that's a resource I wanna highlight for you guys. Uh, now that we're hey, at, uh, at the end, uh, just like we did last week, everyone with your cards. Uh, if you've got questions about anything in our series, sex, gender, porn, marriage, dating, singleness, uh, any of that kind of stuff, write your questions on here and we'll drop them in the basket in the back. Even if you do not have a question, pull out your pen and write on here, I do not have a question. This way, everyone's writing. There's no awkwardness. Um, And we'll give you guys just about 60 seconds. uh, And then you can drop them in the basket right there in the back and head to small groups. I want to say thank you for your questions. The questions you guys wrote last week were fantastic. Loved reading them. Loved hearing what you're thinking about and uh, what you're processing, what you're wondering. Our goal is some of these questions we'll be able to work into like the different messages, but then at the end, we want to take the rest of those questions and have kind of a Q&A night, which I think is the first week of spring break. So if you're out of town for that, I'm real sorry. We'll record it and have it up on YouTube for you. Uh, but otherwise, we're going to be here and we're going to use a Q&A uh, and then it'll be a really good topic on there. So uh, if you got your cards already written, drop them in the back, head to small group, and um, yeah, let's have some great discussions.